Welcome back. The Human Sciences Research Council's Africa Institute of South Africa and the China Rural Technology Development Center of the Ministry of Science and Technology will be locked in dialogue on the subject of poverty alleviation through science and technology workshop tomorrow. The two-day dialogue seeks to provide assistance, capacitate professionals, practitioners, grassroots innovators, volunteers and agripreneurs to gain practical knowledge and skills in implementing agricultural science and technology based on initiatives to alleviate poverty in vulnerable communities. To speak more on this, we're joined by Dr. Rodney Managa, who is research specialist at the Human Sciences Research Council. A very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So from this conversation, from where does it spring board? What is the current state of the application of this when dealing with poverty? Uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks to the viewers. Uh, yes, uh, the first thing that maybe I should highlight is that uh, this um, workshop or this dialogue that we are having with uh, China uh, Rural Technology Development Center uh, is going to take place for the three days. Uh, it will be from Monday to Wednesday. So when we come back to your question, yes, uh, I can say that uh, for South Africa, we have made uh, advance in terms of developing the agricultural technologies and even innovation to be used. And uh, also same with uh, the uh, our counterpart, China. And I know that we, 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 we learn a lot in terms of agricultural technology in China, which they are a little bit far. So the only thing that I may highlighted here is that the advancement in technology has been made, but there is another layer of technology transfer to those that you have mentioned there, the agripreneurs, people who are working uh, in the farms, in the rural. So we still see uh, the gaps that, that needs to be closed. And uh, although we are not saying that we have exhausted all the technology that needs to be developed because the challenges that keep on going, we have climate change now. So we see the challenges evolving with time. So which needs the technologies to be always developed and also improved to able to assist us in terms of like uh, making an improvement into this sector. Mm. And it's interesting, as you're saying that, uh, you know, the problems themselves evolve because the conditions under which it occurs also do that because of climatic conditions. So in South Africa, for instance, what have we been using as a frontier technologies and has it been mainly in the rural areas? Is it specific to rural areas? What are the lessons that we're learning? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, uh, if we talk about these uh, technologies that are used in uh, agriculture, there have to be technology that helps the farmers to able to adapt or they have to their farming practices have to be resilient maybe to mention some of the uh, advances that have been made now we know that there is a uh, the precision farming uh, vertical farming and also uh, the the issue of uh, vertical uh, vertical uh, planting and uh, hydroponics so these technologies they do help the farmers to adapt to issue of like uh, the water shortage due to the lack of rainfall we know we see that we, there is a change in the pattern of the rains the water south africa being water scarce country itself so the that becomes a challenge to the farmers but they are development in terms of the varieties or the uh, types of the agricultural commodities that the uh, farmers can uh, able to use which they are more adapted to these conditions uh, that are brought about by the changing in the climate and then you mentioned the issue of um, the rural areas so that's where we see most of the uh, uh, people practicing the small older farming and these are the people that needed a lot of support because what we see in south africa we have at the uh, big commercial farms 
which they have already make a lot of uh, significant progress in terms of adapting their production uh, through the technology. Even the technology use that they have, it's because they have investment and they also have a means, like the knowledge, uh, the dissemination of the, the knowledge to them, it's also advanced. So the rural areas becomes a target for us uh, as to say that we need to build that capacity so that those that are practicing in the rural areas, which are responsible to feed actually majority of the people that are living in the rural, in the, in the poverty, and uh, also those that they need to improve their livelihoods. So the projects that we've got going, and if you could tell us about the partnerships with the Chinese, for instance, I was just looking at the fact that they use rich forest resources uh, to uh, plant such things as traditional medicine, while also tackling uh, poverty. So what projects do we have and how are we matching it? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, when we mention uh, China, for example, it's uh, one of the countries is one of the country that has um, actually faced the challenges that we are facing but uh, they have managed to come out of some of those challenges and uh, they uplifted um, the almost 80 percent of their population out of the poverty and one of the things that they've done was to invest a lot in agricultural technology they have to invest a lot in the rural uh, farming uh, system where they supported the farmers with inputs like the use of the fertilizers and then they give them seeds that are improved and then now when we see that there are even more development of the technologies that we we, we now learn the, uh, from the knowledge of China, but also in terms of the trade between China and South Africa, the exchange of the seeds and also the exchange of some agricultural uh, uh, tools or the, the, the agricultural mechanization that are being used in between these two countries. So I can say that the partnership is very, very much important between these two countries and uh, between the actually agricultural uh, uh, sector, uh, because there is a lot that we can able to exchange and learn and also the Chinese as well there is a lot that they can able to benefit from the advancement that have been made in South Africa. And the transferring of technological skills is it just to communities or uh, are startups also being used to help further the project objectives? Yes, uh, it's not just uh, about the community, and uh, I must say that this started with uh, we, we. It has to start with the investment on research and development. So the professionals, then where we need to build the capacity, and uh, of those that work with the farmers, like the agricultural practitioners and then uh, so that they can able to transfer and able to build the, 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 the knowledge base to the farmers. So we see that we, it has to be from the national uh, towards the, 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 the rural uh, uh, setup. So it's something that it's, it can't be just said only uh, applicable to the rural, but we need to, uh, we need to advance in all levels from the knowledge generation development of technology and transfer of that technology to be used by the farmers. Thank you for your time and insights, Dr. Rodney Managa. He is a research specialist at the Human Science Research Council.